Steve Kaufman here. Welcome to Hanshi's World. Tonight we have a very, very unique episode for you to listen to the words of masters that are bona fide masters, legitimate masters, and recognized throughout the world for their contributions to the martial arts. With me here is Grandmaster Irving Soto, Shodai Soke, and here is world famous Frank Dukes. Now, there you go, absolutely. Okay? <laughs> and uh, we're going to like, just have an open little conversation. We're going to talk about the history of the martial arts from three perspectives. So let's just get the entire show going over here. Frank? Pleasure to meet you. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you very much for appearing, for Pleasure. coming in to be here and Thank you. talking with okay. you. Grandmaster Soto, you and I know each other going back a couple oh, of weeks at least. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's start it off. So tell me, um, and I, I'll just pick it at random, whoever wants to go first, whoever raises their hand. Mm -hmm. right? How did you get involved with the martial arts? Oh, thank, you, Soto. Oh, thank you for asking that question. It's a very important question yeah. for the public to know. Uh, many years ago, I lived in Brooklyn at, at lower income area, which was Italian, predominant Italians, African Americans, and a full spectrum of Jewish community. At that time, it was a great neighborhood, uh, and there was a guy named Tashi Yoshi that lived, uh, uh, actually had a laundry mat and starched shirts. I mean, pressed them in the old days, I don't know if yeah. people know, or you know, he starched them and stuff like that. He had a, a little, uh, I wouldn't say a dojo, but he had a laundry man in the back of the laundry room. He was teaching some kids some form of, I didn't know at the time, jujitsu. And that's how I started. Oh. Uh, my very first month is in, in jujitsu. Yeah, it's degenerated into a lifestyle, that's what I <laughs> tell me. What about you, uh, Master Dukes? I, I, I think I started like most people in the sense of romanticizing what it would be like in watching like the James Bond movies as a kid growing up. and. The Wild Wild West, for, the, yeah. for those who are old enough to remember Robert Conrad, he'd do jiu-jitsu and he'd do some movies, right. and Batman, yeah. and, and, and uh, so, you know, as a young boy, I, I wanted to know more about it, and, and I used to hang outside of martial arts schools because I didn't have the money to, to, to pay for lessons, ah. and so I would uh, literally, you know, uh, you know, practice outside in exchange what I did was I would like uh, borrow a broom, like I would be outside the Bill Riyosaki school. And Bill Riyosaki yeah, was very yeah. famous. Uh, the best friends was like Bruce Lee. You'd see Bruce Lee in the school. He trained Benny the Jet. Yukitas is uh, part of his lineage. Uh, you know, the people who who studied under Sensei Bill, um, very famous uh, uh, martial artists back in the day, um, and I didn't know who he was at the time. I mean, I just knew he was this great, strong vigor of a man, quick as lightning, and he'd amaze me, and I would just go into the Chinese laundromat, or Chinese restaurant next door, I'd borrow the broom and the thing, and of course I would sweep up for them yeah. inside to get the broom, <laughs> that was the deal, and then, and then for the privilege of using their broom, I was able to sweep in, center, in front of his school and clean up the trash, and I'd often uh, work even harder to do the windows and stuff, and he would raise the blinds, and and it was kind of an unwritten code, and he would, he would sort of teach me through the window. And he would occasionally send the guys out to invite me in. And of course, I was scared, being a young boy, I was scared, so I thought they were sending them out to beat me up. So, yeah. so, so I'd run away, or I was too shy. And a couple of times, some kids approached me in school to train with yeah. them, and, and I, I said, no, thank you, you know, just, I'll train this way. And, then I, and because of it, it really set me on a certain journey, because I was polluted with a political garbage that's kind of handed down from one generation to the next where it becomes important like the, the a lot of people get caught up in like like Karu. This has to be has to be pure, this has yeah, to be this yeah, thing. Yeah. And and real martial arts isn't even that kind of a journey. It's really a journey of self discovery and self enlightenment. And, Absolutely and, right. and what's true for one man isn't necessarily the truth for another. And I was entrapped in that and I was very fortunate in that. And as a result of it I came up with what I call my fast system, which is is an acronym that stands for Focus, Action, Skill, Strategy, and Tactics. It's a system I, I taught. I taught U.S. Navy SEALs. I'm very proud to the fact that they felt that my system was, was uh, gave them something to their repertoire to the point that they actually named me as a contributor in some of their manuals. Uh -huh. 
and uh, I've had a great life as far as traveling around the world. I've gotten to meet great people as a martial artist, Irving Soto especially. I mean, it, you wouldn't believe it, but when we were like, I was 19 and Irving was, I think, he was in his tw yeah, early 20s, yeah. early me. I mean, we had a rivalry. We hated each other. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, here we are sitting here in this living room today, and we're sitting there going, oh, we wanted to, like, you know. Really be out. Yeah, yeah, and, you know? and the funny story I got on Irving is, and this is really funny, is you got to understand, when you first heard of me, right? Well, maybe I should let you tell the story about the training. You know, you tell him what happened. Well, wait, wait, but you, you, yeah, you, you, you know him not yeah, well, here, but out there, just in the co on the coast. Well, no, no, I, I basically, uh, as I was telling the story, Frank went ahead of us, but that's <laughs> fine. Um, that's Frank. Through that, well, I'm, years, I'm, I'm not going to I'm, I'm at speed, you know. Let's get the chase. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> This is dancing stuff. Just stand there, just line up so I can hit you. You know? Well, just to make a long story, like I said, I was training with Tashi Yoshi for yeah. three years. And I, I trained with certain other masters, which a bunch of African Americans during that time in era in New York City in 1950, martial arts was unheard of. I mean, a yeah. few handle us knew about it, and I was one of the kids. But as I was growing up, I was invited to go to Japan, and that's how I started uh, uh, tournaments. Tournaments was around, committees was all around the country, but the, the, the sophisticated committees yes. like Frank Ford. It was overseas. I was invited by a, a group of uh, Japanese public, you know, in Japanese uh, federations. I went over there and performed, and that's how I got into the committee that Frank is talking about, just to get you where, where he's at right now. Yeah, but in, all, in all fairness, you, you did fight, I, I want to make this real clear. Irving did fight here in New York. He fought yes. like the back alley things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you look at, uh, there's even literature like from John Keehan yes. in 1975. Uh, they had an event in Ma Massachusetts. They say it's probably the first. People say, oh, it's the first uh, mixed martial art event, but that's not true. The actual, even first ones was in Chicago taking place wow. in the 1940s, uh, where they had, when they were the U.S. Marine Corps was mm -hmm. trying to determine what they yeah. should use for a self-defense yeah. system, and they were debating between jiu-jitsu and boxing or making a combination, so yeah. they put a yeah. boxer against a jiu-jitsu man, yeah. and that's how you ended up with their combative system, at least in the 1940s. Uh -huh. But that kind of fighting, and what we're talking about, actually goes back to, I don't know if people saw the movie Fearless, it, yeah, it goes back to the yeah. Box Rebellion, it was in China, it's been used well, in, in selling bets in organized Asian organized crime. They, right. Instead of going to war, they say, okay, here's our five best guys against your five yeah. best guys, whoever wins, we'll, just, we'll, we'll end the discussion, yeah, rather exactly. than killing each other. But, yeah. but that's kind of the history, but um, anyway, so my point is, Irving heard about me, I would hear about Irving. I I saw fights where Irving fought, and he was devastating. I mean, I gotta be honest with you. A lot of times, people give me the credit as far as being the first Caucasian to be the the Kuwaiti champion. The, the real reason that happened, there were a lot of guys I think who could have had that distinction. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And Irving being one of them. The, I was probably the first one where all the kind of promoters. There was like five general promoters. One was from Korea. One was from Vietnam. I think Vietnam or Malaysia, he, he was a, that whole kind of outside region. Yeah, you had Japan, you had China, and then you had the West, uh, oh, South yeah. Africa, yeah. Uh, and the, you know, which connected to England and also the, uh, the Dutch. This was real throwdowns. Yeah, right. right. yeah. This wasn't this like the, a point a basic to run. No, no, this is, basic this is tournament. Uh, two guys walk in, one guy yeah. walks out. It, one guy walks out. And that's it. And, and so, uh, you know, and, and you could attack the joints, you could headbutt, you could use elbows. I don't know how you had to use, that's right. It was, well, yeah. That's what it's about. Right. They exactly. try to tell that to these kids today, and they, well, uh, those they things, see it all on TV, yeah. but they, they can't get a handle on the reality of it, you know? No. It was, you couldn't bite, technically, okay, you couldn't hit the throat, but it happened. I mean, I watched it happen. I watched a very famous fight where the guy was losing in it, and the last second to win, he threw it a left, and he caught the guy in the neck, and, and the guy went down. But you know, and I've seen guys, you know, I've been thumped, you know, yeah. I don't know if you remember the movie Lionheart, where the Scotsman comes up, shake hands, yeah. okay, and he thumbs, he thumbs Jean-Claude in the movie. Okay. Okay, that actually happened, that's real choreography, that actually okay. happened with the Scotsman who actually came out and shook, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know, went to shake hands and bop, he went, the fight was on. Um, and that's, that's kind of what happened. There weren't sanctioned fights. Um, 
but I, I heard of this guy, you know, Irving Soto, who was this mad Puerto Rican kid, they would tell me, and, and, and he, he would, and these, you know, you know, and, and, they, and, and you know, he, and these are Jewish guys, man. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you're outnumbered, so. He was very proud, you know, he's very proud, and he was really, really cocky, and, 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 but that was a confidence. It wasn't that you had That's to have right. it. It wasn't yeah. false bravado. Well, and also we grew up at the era with like uh, Muhammad Ali, right. who was yeah, showing that right. kind yeah, of. Right. Yeah. So That's to right. get the fights, you had to almost act that way. And I'm guilty of it too. I mean, yeah. I, I, I could, I could see why these folks believe me. <laughs> this guy. Is no, let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What do you think? Okay, outside of you know, with Frank here, yeah. was your most memorable combat scenario? Oh. Uh, we, we, you know, the roughest fight you had that you emerged victorious in. It, it was in Hong Kong, and and, and let, me, let me just say this. Uh, I It was a long time ago, and sometimes we didn't have cameras, they didn't have none of that. I don't remember. That's right. They used to tie us up just to go into a, I used to remember a, a pier or something, and we went back there, and then they think, you know, we, I'm fighting this guy. So I fought this guy, and, and I know Frank was there that day. And uh, I, I don't remember Frank was fighting because I didn't stick around that long. But uh, yeah. uh, I knew that he was in the back somewhere, and I wanted to fight him. So and, fast. And, and it's really important yeah. to understand also. We didn't even know each other by really our names. Nah. You know, we, yeah. we knew we just each other by reputation. reputation. Well, yeah. well, well they, they gave us it was for the romance of it. They would they, first of all to keep security down. They didn't want you to get scouted, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So they would give us a name. like one guy, Joshua Westmuller, very great fighter in Nishiyama. Um, you know, uh, you don't hear about him at all, but we all knew him as Cherokee. You know, okay. it wasn't until years later, I mean, it wasn't until 30 years later when I run into him at a martial arts hall of fame event, and I go, Cherokee? And then it's like, you know, into him, the horse? And, and, it's like, you know, and then we get the, we knew each other's names. Uh -huh. And and that happened, and that, you know, I, I heard all sorts of names for, for, for Irving, which I won't repeat. The, the one thing, the story I want to share, was really kind of funny, it's daring to my heart. The really kind of started things off between me and him on the wrong foot when we first started. Is I I fought in an event, and it's my world record knockout. It was you know it was like you know like uh, half you know, of a thirty nine. It was like three point two seconds. Is what yeah, I think yeah. was is what they called they told me. And, and you got to understand all these records is what was told to me. I never kept track of anything. I just went and did my thing. Yeah, right. And they told to Blackwood Magazine, and Blackwood Magazine is what put it in their in their article. That's where things start. And then it was recorded, I think, in, in for the certain sports committees in South Africa, and it's on record with their sports committees. Okay. So, so, but the thing is, in, in, in Irving, you know, I, I I win the fight, and here's this guy screaming bloody murder. Okay, that I, that no, this couldn't happen. It can't happen. It didn't happen. My point is, he goes through hell to get there. Mm -hmm. I had the world, my world's fastest knockout at that moment, and what had happened is Irving had gone through hell to come see me, right? Yeah. Am I right? He came right. through the hell. Right. Okay, so what happens is he makes the fatal mistake of somebody in the crowd recognizes him, calls him out, he had turned his head to say how lovely they got, by the time he turned out, I was, my fight was over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's screaming blood. And I, you gotta say, here I am. Do it again, man. <laughs> and here I am. I just went off the crap with this guy. And here's this guy standing up screaming, it never happened. This is not fair. I'm going, what, what is this? What is going on here? It didn't hit me that what, what had happened, you know? Yeah. And then then it was like, you know, okay, let's get it on. We wanted to fight that day. We wanted to fight. And they, just, they broke us up. Yeah, they were going to fight. <laughs> And then, and then we would, I would watch him, he would watch me because we, were, we figured we were eventually yeah. to fight. They never would fight us, um, you know. And it was a lot because, I mean, you understand, I'm a huge guy. I, yeah. I, I, was, I had weight on Irving, you know, yeah. uh, just as fast, if not faster, and, you know, record. He had more fights than me, though. Uh -huh. he, had, he, had more, he had far more fights than me in experience. He knew the game. He knew the games better than other people, so he had his own advantage. So it was really kind of. You think yeah. he's going to let us get into this thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, he's excited. <laughs> well, you know what? I am excited because I don't get a chance to talk about it. Irving is a guy who's an understated talent. He's not given, I think, the respect he deserves. He's not given. He's not given the the, the recognition he deserves. 
He was locked out of the magazines because of his ethnicity, and they can't tell me different because I actually brought it up when I, I did my coup d'etat. You know, okay. you know, when I brought it up to Black Belt Magazine when I was when the, when they did the article in 1980, they did uh, about me winning the coup d'etat. They mm -hmm. talked to, to a number of people. They were already talking to yeah. to, to to John Keehan. They already had him. We already had the events. And it's it, the absurdity of people to sit there and go say, "Oh, this never." Happened. It just shows you how incompetent. Well, it's beyond ignorant. Okay. It's incompetent because even if you're ignorant, you can go find the answers. Stupid is when you don't. <laughs> you, you, you don't bother to find the answers, and the information is right out there, and it always has been. And well, and so I'm gonna shut up here because I know I'm talking too <laughs> much. But I really want to say. <laughs> This guy, this guy, I really want to say, this guy is a, is a, is a real talent, he's never really gotten the, 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 the respect I feel he really deserves, and, and that's all I'm going to say to people out there. And, and just like you with your books, I mean, you, you, you really set the bar for Fantastic. many martial yes. artists yes. To, to understand and she, that there's no more martial arts in the NC, but she can see, right? Okay. Okay. Golf men, listen. Am I right? Golf men. I mean, I mean, look, look at all the books you've, you've done and, and you've brought a, a tremendous, a tremendous amount of intellect to the arts and that should have been there in the first place, you know? And it's just sad that it, it, it isn't, you know? And, you. and that's it. So that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Um, you've been putting up a lot of stuff on YouTube. Yes. Okay? Yes. Okay? yes. You put on videos showing real technique. I've been watching a lot of your iron palm techniques. Oh, yeah. uh, this goes beyond the trick. I mean, there used to be a whole thing in breaking. Yeah, well, the guy broke 12 boards. Yeah, but there were spacers. Man. <laughs> yeah, you, you remember that? Yeah, 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, not for nothing, when we used to break, uh, like the uh, famous picture of myself uh, that was taken from two angles. Right, I've seen two that. inches. Yes. Yes, two right. inches, man. Two inches, that's... And oh, that's, <laughs> okay. that's okay. Of, of wood, you know? Yeah. And then like, uh, you know, with the six inch, and the six inch, the six foot uh, flying kicks and things like that. You see all the kids doing this stuff now, okay? The reason they're doing this is because they saw us do it. Absolutely. Okay, and because they said, well, yeah, well, if these guys are doing it, we can do it. But we didn't have anybody showing us that no, stuff. No, no. We just, we know, yeah, hey, the guy can, you know, put his hand right, on a brick. Right. Well, how do you do that, man? <laughs> yeah, but nobody taught us that. Then, of course, all the books that start coming out, and you've got to be very careful as you're reading, because this is a real book, this is a bullshit book, this is like uh, a novelty book or something like that. How did you start to develop yourself and train yourself with Iron Palm? Iron Palm, for those of you who don't know, is one of the most profound Ki or Chi mentalities that you can develop. Okay, it's also it's also within you. You have to be able to bring it out. You have to be able to free yourself to do this. That's right. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, I guess your travels in the world of. Uh, well, I, I guess. Chi and Ki. Yeah. Why, what do you prefer, Chi or Ki? I use Ki. I use Ki to. You know, yeah. Okay. I just use Iron Palm because I think uh, the public will know it better as Iron Palm because they're not. Uh, reading books in reference to understanding what uh, chi power is, transitions energy that persists in someone's heart and someone's energy that you practice. So there's a lot of things that you do to get that. It's hard to decipher that. I'm you know, okay. talking about it. So uh, when, I was, when I was a kid, I used to see guys like yourself and others, you know, like breaking. And uh, I remember seeing this old man in Chinatown here, right here in Moss Street. Uh, and, and he was a, a actual Wing Chun, but he also taught uh, Pakwa Xinying. Okay, Pakwa. So, okay. Uh, I... You want to tell them what Pakwa is? Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a form of Tai Chi, but it also generates energy to the palm, intermittent uh, Chi to your palm, again. And it does tra movements, you know. So I was watching this individual, and I asked him, what are you doing? He didn't speak no word of English, trust me. Every week I used to go, it was training Jiu Jitsu, I was training all the other type of martial arts, but I wanted to learn how to do that. So this individual, you know, I, I finally, one day, I saw this guy named Ray, uh, African-American. He was one of his top students. Break uh, a piece of wood this thick, I mean, solid oak. I, and I was unbelievable to me. I asked the guy, because he spoke English, and he told me something that intimates from Sayo Kantian. 
pranayama, you know, you breathe and you break. So I said, well, that doesn't make no sense to me. You know, I, I, I tried hitting it and it was bleeding my hands. And, I'm, and I was a good fighter, like Frank stated. Frank was an excellent fighter too, but I'm just saying, I tried it and tried it. So it took me anything from 15 years to actually get to understand what I do. Uh, it is basically uh, not meditation. Meditation means smoking, all that very matter. Meditation and kind of just going through it. And it takes time. It comes through. It's a lot of basic training. You know, you, you, it's hard to explain. You have to do okay. it. You know? can, I, can I yeah, jump yeah. in? Yeah. What you have to do, okay, and I, I've, I've done some of it, but yeah. I, obviously I'm, I'm not at this point in my life going to be out, you know, putting my hand through yeah, course, uh, like, course, uh, construction company walls <laughs> with bricks and stuff like that. What you do is you set it up on a solid uh, oh, platform, platform, and then yeah. just very simply, tap it, boom. That's it. That's all you, you're not, no, you're not no, doing anything. Or screaming and boom. Yeah. But what you're doing, you're developing this energy, this universal energy in you to come through you and break it for you. Thank you for explaining that. Okay, you don't break it, man. You know, hey, you see what I broke? No, oh, I saw what broke because of you. You know, I got fat. My hands are real soft. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, I remember in the old days, we used to work the maki water to them. Like a rock board, yeah. It was impossible. You know, had a pair of knuckles that were out there at the time. But what you're doing is just very slowly, just tap it, tap it. And when you come to understand the energy that's coming out of you, the energy will transfer from you through the object that you're striking. I don't want to go into a whole routine about this. Yeah, it takes two years. We'll talk about this in another time. <laughs> you know? uh, so when you first started finding out that you could do this, did it change your fighting style? And the reason I ask you that is because now I remember like, you know, I have pictures and all the videos and everything. Like, Look out, here comes Snake, you know, forget yeah, about it. Right. Now, when I got these guys <laughs> coming up, I just don't. <laughs> That's as simple as that. Then again, when you get older, you ain't got much more energy than that anyway, man. So you have to rely on a higher source of, of yeah. uh, focus that will enable you to function for it as its instrument yeah. rather than you yeah. trying to think that you are like the, exactly. all, the almighty exactly. or anything yeah. like that. You asked me what makes the, me a better fighter or how to change my life. Yes. Well, I don't have to use a lot of force. Exactly. That's the trick to this stuff, and I love it because it, it showed me. I mean, like Frank said, we when I used to fight, I used to come home and like beat up, and I'll tell you, I'll sit down and say, man, I got to do something better than this, you know what I mean? And I know he did too, because he's not hurting just because. I know a lot of people in the net will say Frank is not a a, a, a fighter, and I've heard and I've heard that, and that bothers me because you know what? I, I kept quiet and silent for a lot of years because the job that I do, I don't talk about it. I want myself taught uh, team, SEAL team six, SEAL team five, and I've taught a lot of people. I just don't talk about it because it's not. That's not. I don't try to mix the job towards what I actually do in life. So, but when I hear people picking on on Frank and reference that he's, uh, and I don't want to say that word, but he's not real. Well, folks, I'm here to testify for him. If I have to sit in the grand jury tomorrow morning, I will do that for him, and I know they'll do it for me. You know. Okay. Uh, I, want, I also want to say something. I, really <laughs> yeah, I, you know, but, but, uh, I knew this was coming, man. You, know, yeah. you, you want to talk about credibility. Yeah. Okay, if you take a look at who the critics are, you can. Oh, well, you, yes. You, you, you do it back. I, that's what I try to tell people. When you, when you hear people talk, check, out, check your sources. Yes. Do they have motive? Uh, what's their backgrounds? Uh, who, who are they? You know what I mean? I mean, I had guys sitting there trying to challenge me on my intelligence background, which, oh, yeah. it, which is documented, it's military records, and yet this guy's saying, oh, I'm, I was intelligence, and when I did a check on that person, the irony is, oh yeah, he's with military intelligence unit, he, he, has a, he was a fuel specialist, and all he did is fill up the gas tanks, it's, oh, it, it, yeah, you know, okay, it was an yeah, embellishment, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is the kind of thing we see in martial arts, and, but it's not martial arts, and I want to say this, make it very clear, there are a lot of people in martial arts who can put on a uniform, they can get a black belt, they even get a certificate. But that doesn't make you a martial artist. What makes you a martial artist is your actions as a human being. Do you show respect for yourself and others? That's it. Okay? Um, are you contributing to your community? Right? And are you willing to lay your life down for your fellow man in the community? Amen. That is that is a reward. I know that man over there will. I have risked my life as well, and I know you, you have too. Alright? And that's the difference between what is real and what is not real. 
So let's get our definition straight when it really comes down to defining that. Okay. I to, wait, 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 wait. I want to add, let me, general public, yeah. we got this man being the interviewer. Yeah. No, so it's right. Right. <laughs> we'll put him on. Listen, he's my he has no escape. I got him on this side. You got him on that yeah. side. <laughs> so he got no escape. He's my hero. This man has written how many books, sorry? I'm just going to yeah, 37. Jeez. 37 books. One of the best selling books, which is my favorite. Book of Firing, Miyamoto yeah. Musachi. That's it, yeah. yeah. Listen to this, Miyamoto Musachi. I know most of martial artists I mean, and people that don't know. I mean, go to Barnes and Noble. You see this book everywhere in the country. I, I've been in Japan. Uh, yeah, no, that, that really blew me out when I found out, like, you know, I, got, I, got, I get emails from guys in, like, New Zealand. I says, wow, how'd the book get over there, man? You know, I said, are they paying me my royalties for this, man? I mean, <laughs> this kind of thing, you know? No, so, uh, well, thank you very, very much for that. Well, you, you're my hero. Let me, well, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. You have an email? Yes, I do. What is your email? Mastersoto at AOL.com. Mastersoto at AOL.com. It's on your screen. You can see it. How about you? Uh, Hanshi Frank Dukes, H-A-N-S-H-I-F-R-N-K-D-U-X. Hanchi Frank Dukes. At gmail. At gmail.com. Okay, very really excellent. And of course, you know, you can get a hold of me at Hanchi's World at gmail.com. Okay. And I need to interview you for my own column on WorldwideDojo.com, which is Legends and Legacies. And you get you Because he is a legend. <laughs> he's a quiet he man. <laughs> he's a quiet man, folks. I mean, he's not imitation. He's real martial artist. And, and I hate the word martial artist, by the way. <laughs> yeah. tell you? I don't yeah. like. I consider myself a martial scientist. Like martial, I call him martialist. Martial, martial artist to me is indicative of like artist yeah, like entertainment <laughs> shit. Man. You, know, yeah. you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like, like, like you go to some of these tournaments and they've got these glow in the dark weapons. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. And they're like doing, and these kids, yeah, they're doing what their senseis are telling them to do, and. What I think is important is that the sensei has also got to tell them that they are not really equipped yeah. to go out there and yeah, and I agree with deal that. with business. I know? agree with that statement because I think uh, most of the kids miss construed that they're going to be able to take on ten guys. Well, they have a false yeah, security. A twelve-year-old kid with a black belt is going to go out there. It doesn't it's not happen. happen. Anyway. Thank you for watching. This to me has been a very, very unique experience to have two, and I'm not being cute here, bona fide, genuine, real deal masters. Okay? For you to see and for you to hear. And send those cards and letters, and we'll expect them. Thanks for watching. See you next time.